Hello children, how are you all? I am fine here and I too expect the same from you. And I am Dakshayani from Bardasnar Metric Higher Secondary School Handling Biology. Children, today we are going to discuss the 10th standard, the first lesson in biology that is the chapter 12, Plant Anatomy and Plant Physiology. In this topic, today in this session, we are going to see the part 3. The part 3 is about the stem and the leaf. And this is the ground plan. If we cut a stem, okay, it will be like this and we are going to discuss the parts. Then we will be discussing the function. The first part is epidermal hair and inter next to the epidermis, epidermal hair that is epidermis, inner to the epidermis, hypodermis, inner to the hypodermis, cortex and inner to the cortex, endodermis and here the vascular bundle is arranged in the form of a so, form of a ring and center portion is a pith and now we are going to discuss what is the last portion last portion is a pith this is about the ground plan if we cut a stem if this is a stem the small section of this is this right and now we are going to see the a section enlarged suppose if we are taking a small section of this we are going to see how it will be right and we are going to see next the internal structure of the dicot stem so this is the picture of the dicot stem children first we will be seeing the parts and later we will discuss their function so what is the first part epidermal hair the first part is epidermal hair and inner to the epidermis cuticle since it is a stem cuticle is present and inner to the cuticle epidermis and inner to the epidermis here it is made up of three to five layers of colon chyma in next to the colon chyma this green color cells is chlorine chyma and next the middle cortex is made up of the parenchyma cells and this is a endodermis inner to the, the layer surrounding the vascular bundle we call it as endodermis and this is a phloem, cambium, xylem and the innermost structure is a pith and now we are going to discuss about their functions see what is outermost the epidermal hair is the outermost and it consists of three layers epidermis and next to the epidermis hypodermis and then endodermis and since it is a stem cuticle is present and next to the end epidermis we see the cortex here cortex is divisible into three regions outer middle and the inner cortex and here this is a colon chyma this cells refers to the colon chyma what is the function of colon chyma the main function of colon chyma is mechanical support they provide mechanical support mechanical support and next this green color layers refers to the chlorine chyma since chloroplast is present they are said to be chlorine chyma and what is the function of chloroplast children photosynthesis so the main function of this chlorine chyma cells is photosynthesis and next to this there is a circular cells made of parenchyma with intercellular spaces and their function is to allow the passage of food substances from hair in from the outer surface to the inner xylem and phloem and next to the cortex the layer surrounding the vascular bundle we call it as endodermis and what is the function of phloem children we have already discussed the function of phloem is the transport of food particle food particle and xylem transport of water and the centermost portion is a pith and now we are going to study about the structure of this condition of the vascular bundle here the xylem since cambium is present the dicot the vascular bundle is said to be open since cambium is present vascular bundle is said to be open and the xylem is said to be endark what what do you mean by endark children 
end arc in the sense protoxylem towards the center and metaxylem towards the periphery we call the xylem as end arc right and it is said to be collateral what do you mean by collateral they are arranged one after the other xylem and then the phloem so it is said to be conjoint conjoint collateral conjoint and collateral so what is the condition this is an important need question children uh, identify the for characters of the dicot uh, stems vascular bundle the uh, answer is the xylem is the vascular bundle is open end or conjoint and collateral why we call this as open since cambium is present we call the vascular bundle is open and why the condition is said to be end or protoxylem towards the center and metaxylem towards the periphery right so this is about the internal structure of the dicot stem and this is a dicot stem in the sense example sunflower stem and next we are going to see so next we are going to study about the internal structure of the monocot stem children what is the first part the first part is a epidermis and inner to the epidermis what is a part endodermis and fully ground tissue here you see the vascular bundles are scattered throughout the ground tissue right so vascular bundle what is this vascular bundle and next we are going to study about the transverse section of the monocot stem monocot stem in the sense maize grass paddy right the stems we are going to see and this is the structure of the monocot stem and now we are going to discuss the parts and later the function right and what is the first one cuticle epidermis sclerenchyma colon chloranchyma vascular bundles ground tissue crushed protophyllum metaphloem metaxylem protoxylem protoxylem lacunae and the last one is the bundle sheath right and now we are going to discuss about their parts children now we are going to discuss about the parts what is the first part cuticle it is the outermost layer and it is for protection and next to the cuticle is the epidermis and in case of monocot stem the cortex is made up of sclerenchyma cells this is an important question children what is the difference between the cortex of dicot and the monocot stem in dicot stem we studied colon chyma cells and below that we studied the chloran chyma but here the arrangement is different the cortex is made up of sclerenchyma cells and in middle we can see the chloran chyma so this is the main difference and this is also the internal questions from this lesson so sclerenchyma mechanical support and what is the function of chloran chyma chloran chyma is very good photosynthesis since chloroplast is present the main function is photosynthesis and the vascular bundle are scattered throughout the uh, ground tissue and you see this 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 it looks like a skull right it's human skull so the vascular bundle is said to be skull shape and this is the vascular bundle and fully we see the ground tissue and here this blue color part denotes the phloem what is the function of phloem yes transport of food and here the phloem is divisible into two protophloem and the metaphloem likewise xylem is one is a protoxylem this is the protoxylem and this is the meta xylem and there is here the one more portion one more here the xylem disintegrates down to form a cavity called as protoxylem lacuna it's an important question children how protoxylem lacuna is formed the protoxylem descends downwards to form a empty cavity called as protoxylem lacuna and the layer surrounding the vascular bundle is called as the bundle sheath and now here now we are going to discuss about the condition of the vascular bundle vascular bundle is skull shape is skull shape and the xylem what is absent here cambium is absent so vascular bundle is said to be closed and end arc end arc 
end are conjoint and collateral phloem and next it is present next to that xylem is arranged so it is said to be conjoint and collateral and protoxylem towards the center and metaxylem towards the periphery so in that condition we say it as endarch and collateral so what is the difference for now we are going to discuss about the difference between the monocot stem and the dicot stem and this is the difference children first you difference between the dicot stem and the monocot stem first the characters this is a dicot stem and this is a monocot stem and hypoderm is i told you already here it is made up of chloran chyma so colon chyma cells and here there it is meant to be uh, made of scleran chyma cells so here it is said to be colon chymatous and there it is said to be scleran chymatous and next to this here ground tissue here we can see the vascular bundles are arranged in the shape of the ring so the ground tissue can be differentiated but here in the monocot stem the vascular bundles are scattered throughout the ground tissue so the ground tissue is not differentiated yes and here the star tissue is present and it is absent there and medullary rays is present and that is absent what is a medullary rays you see children in the vascular bundle the space between the vascular bundle we see the we say it as a medullary rays this is the medullary rays this is we can see in the dicot stem but in the case of monocot stem the vascular bundle is scattered throughout this medullary rays are absent and in the condition of the vascular bundles collateral and open here collateral and closed why we say it as open here cambium is present there cambium is absent and here it is arranged in the form of a ring and there the vascular bundles are scattered throughout the ground tissue and here secondary growth occurs and secondary growth is absent the secondary growth appears from the per from the pericycle so this is the main difference between the dicot stem and the monocot stem and now we are going to discuss about the dicot leaf that is a sunflower leaf first we can see the parts and later the function okay children outermost part is a cuticle outermost part is a cuticle and the leaf root hairs are absent yes and here it has two layers one is the upper epidermis and another one is the lower epidermis and here the ground tissue of the leaf we call it as mesophyll what we call mesophyll and here next to the epidermis there are two layers of parenchyma cells one is said to be palisade parenchyma what do you mean by palisade you see children here they are arranged close without intercellular spaces between them and it contains chloroplast what it contain it contain chloroplast and here protoxylem and metaxylem and next to the palisade parenchyma what we can see we can see the spongy parenchyma why it is said to be spongy because it has more intracellular spaces that is the respiratory cavities between them and phloem phloem and the out what is the covering of the vascular bundle bundle sheath and stoma you see here children this openings we call it as stoma stomata is present where the guard cells are present and it helps in the respiration stoma and epidermal hair lower epidermis and respiratory cavity and the main difference here right is the mesophyll is differentiated into palisade parenchyma and spongy parenchyma and here the protoxylem is towards the periphery and metaxylem is towards the center here same here we cannot see which is the inner part and which is the outer part but they are arranged one after the other so here the xylem is said to be endarc the xylem is said to be endarc so children so this is about the internal structure of the dicot leaf and the main difference is that here the mesophyll is differentiated into spongy and palisade parenchyma but there in the monocot stem it is not differentiated and now we are going to discuss about the internal structure of the monocot leaf this is the internal structure of the monocot leaf children first discuss we can discuss about the parts
and now this is, these are the parts of the monocot stem and first one is the same as in the dicot uh, leaf this is upper epidermis and lower it is a lower epidermis but there we see the respiratory stoma only in the lower epidermis but in the case of monocot leaf we can see stoma on both the sides you see here also stomata is present and here also stomata is present so respiration takes place in both the epidermis layer and respiratory cavity and here the mesophyll is not differentiated into palisade and spongy parenchyma only a single layer of parenchyma cells is present with the chloroplast so this is a parenchyma cells and here this is the chloroplast this is a chloroplast right and bundle sheath xylem and phloem xylem helps in the transport of water phloem helps in the transport of food particles right and lower epidermis and stroma is present and here you see some epidermal cells are enlarged right that is that enlarged cells we call it as a bulliform cells an important question children what are bulliform cells in the monocot leaf the epidermis some epidermal cells get enlarged in size to form the bulliform cells yes children so this is about the structure of the monocot leaf and now let us compare and contrast the differences and similarities between the monocot leaf and the dicot leaf So the first difference is that dicot leaf, monocot leaf. Here the leaf is said to be dorsi ventral. What means dorsal? We can differentiate the leaf as dorsal and ventral. Male bagam, kid bagam. We can say we can differentiate. But in the case of monocot, it is said to be isobilateral. It will be of parallel venation, like this. Example, you can see the leaf of the grass, leaf of the paddy, and here mesophyll is differentiated into. palisade and spongy parenchyma we studied in the dicot leaf but here the parenchyma is not differentiated so these are the main difference between the dicot leaf and the monocot leaf children yes so far we discussed about the dicot stem and monocot stem dicot leaf and monocot leaf so go through this topics practice the diagram well children and no take down the notes and differences with this we have attached the study material question bank and assessment of this lesson go through it and parents please help your children to do the homework thank you children have a nice day